Long, long ago, a philosopher asked, if someone is enjoying something for the wrong reasons, do you stop them? And today I finally answer that question. No, you just meme the crap out of them. That's right, welcome to a wonderful inclusion of my probably most fun series, Laughing at Toxicity, where we go down a lovely path and we find toxic shiz and we just laugh at it because in the end of the day, it's way more fun to laugh than to get all pissed off about it. I know, truly a wonderful life philosophy. I'm pretty awesome. And today, the little itty bitty target of uh, this wonderful series is the My Hero Academia fan base. Because, as we know, they're like rabid squirrels, goddammit. Rabid squirrels. I actually held off on making this video, not only because I was lacking information of different segments of the toxicity that I'd be able to poke fun at, no, 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 but it was because something was bothering me about My Hero Academia. For some reason, the toxic fandom around season four isn't nearly as toxic as the fandom that was surrounding season two and three. Season one was a bit more underground, I don't think everyone was into it, but two and three, damn! That was the peak of toxicity, and season four did not reach that high. For a while, I was trying to figure out exactly why this was the case, and being that I actually came to conclusion, this is not only a brilliant and lovely satire on all the toxic normies that managed to comprise the lovely My Hero Academia fandom, a beautiful pure pocket of the internet where absolutely no contradictions are found in like every single sentence. Slight spoilers, there's contradictions everywhere, and it's not the absolute cleanest pocket in internet history. And B, you're getting a slight analysis into the minds of the my Hero Academia monsters. <laughs> I'm excited, let's do this. Like and subscribe for more videos where we laugh at toxicity, be it toxic fandoms or other toxic facets of the internet and how it regards to anime. Because my God, I love doing these. It's the ultimate combination of venting my frustrations and also allowing other people to share this pure and beautiful mindset where we don't get upset when we see some toxic garbage going on. No, we appreciate it. We're like, yes, that is some toxic garbage that we could laugh at. Wow. Wow, thank you, Toxic Garbage, for making my day. It's all a matter of perspective, and the toxicity that we've so hated for years of browsing the internet can become our greatest source of fun, as it's become mine. Because newsflash, people are really dumb sometimes, and it's funny. I don't know, watching a baby do something stupid in one of those fail videos, it's funny. I'm not here to, like, promote child abuse or anything, even though Endeavor's my second favorite character in My Hero Academia. No, on the contrary, I think that's, well, on a scale of 1 to 10 on the rongo meter, it's, like, at least, at least a 6. And in case you can't tell, that is an obvious joke, my Hero Academia fans that are probably going to be swarming to this video to leave me your lovely remarks in the comments about how you really appreciate me taking my time to analyze the situation. And that was also sarcasm. It was a joke meant to be funny, not meant for anyone to take offense. And yes, it was funny. I'm not going to explain why it was funny. That is for me to know and for you to find out. God, I love my Hero Academia fans. These guys are the cream of the crowd as far as human beings and philosophical historians. Not every My Hero Academia fan, of course, only the, the precipice of the elite. And it's those guys that we're mostly going to be talking about here. When I think of the toxic My Hero Academia fans, the first thing that always pops into my head are the people that say My Hero Academia is the greatest anime ever created. Now, I personally don't care, because being that it's art and art is subjective, you're allowed to have that opinion, even though it's, well, <laughs> can't say wrong on an opinion about art, but it's like, let's be honest here, if My Hero Academia is your favorite anime, you probably haven't seen more than five, and out of those five, three were probably like Dragon Ball, Pokemon, and Beyblade or something. Maybe Yu-Gi-Oh, but that's already talking about super intellectual 5,000 IQ My Hero Academia fan that managed to spread his reach far away from My Hero Academia, because like, as we know, Yu-Gi-Oh is an extremely niche anime. Pretty much no one's even heard of it, let alone seen it. And yes, My Hero Academia fans, I know from Twitter interactions, you guys uh, don't exactly get sarcasm, so that was sarcasm, and so is that. I don't really care if My Hero Academia is your favorite anime, or not, this doesn't personally bother me. If you've only seen three anime and My Hero Academia is your favorite, well, then that makes sense. Now go watch more anime to broaden your horizons because My Hero Academia probably won't remain your favorite. A lot of people get upset about this because whenever there's a poll, what is the best anime of all time? You got like four billion My Hero Academia fans and they're like, oh, My Hero Academia and it skews up all the polls and that's why polls are garbage. People asked me if we should do a fan voted poll for the best anime of 2019 and the answer was simple. No, I don't want all the normies to vote for Demon Slayer. It's allowed to be your favorite, but if it's the only anime 
in 2019 you watch, but you ain't contributing much, are you? It's technically your least favorite anime of 2019 as well. So the fact that you like My Hero Academia the most as far as anime you've seen doesn't bother me whatsoever. I don't think that's toxic. I honestly appreciate that My Hero Academia is bringing new blood into the anime community. If you encountered anime for the first time with My Hero Academia and it's your favorite, all the power to you, I am happy to welcome you with an open hand. It's allowed to be your favorite show. And someone who says it's their favorite show does not need to get blasted that, oh, My Hero Academia fans only watch two anime. Of course it's his favorite show. No, that's disgusting. Maybe moderate yourself when you're voting for the best anime of all time and just stick to, you know, polls on what the most popular anime of all time is. But I don't care. But here's where the real fun starts. In the very niche fandom that says My Hero Academia is the greatest anime of all time, there are two parts. There's the non toxic part, as I've mentioned, someone who's seen very few anime and is welcomed into the medium. And by the way, welcome. You are awesome for joining. Very cool. Please subscribe for more roasting of the things you love. But the second facet of My Hero Academia fans that say My Hero Academia is the greatest anime of all time are the ones that, true, have only seen My Hero Academia and maybe one or two other shows. But they will still put down the shows they haven't seen to prop up My Hero Academia. I've seen people blast One Piece constantly saying, oh, My Hero Academia is the new greatest show and it's way better than One Piece. One Piece only gets good after like 700 chapters. To which the obvious question is, well, have you ever read One Piece? And the answer to that is, no, I don't need to read One Piece. It's way too long. And that's when I'm just like kind of baffled and dazzled by the stupidity of the scenario. And then I laugh because it's funny that this person actually thinks they're making logical sense. So many people get upset by this. And this is a toxic facet of any fandom. When you love something, in order to continuously prop it up, you can't just say, well, Deku is obviously the greatest protagonist of all time because, well, maybe it's a personal vendetta, but I, I kind of hate Deku after season two. I feel like until and through the tournament arc of season two, Deku was amazing. But honestly, from season three and on, I was not a fan of him at all. To say he's a better shonen protagonist than Luffy is laughable. And the people that do that are the ones that haven't even read One Piece. That is where the toxicity starts when it comes to My Hero Academia is the greatest anime of all time. So as far as the toxicity in the My Hero Academia fandom, the toxic backlash to the My Hero Academia fandom, well, that's toxic too, and it's just as equally funny, okay? When someone says My Hero Academia is the greatest anime and starts putting down other anime to prop up My Hero Academia, even if they haven't seen those other anime, I agree, that's toxic, it's garbage, and it's kind of funny. But when someone says My Hero Academia is their favorite anime, and they get attacked for saying something like that because, oh, they've only seen two anime. Well, as far as the spectrum of anime goes, is it really fair for me to say that Gintama is my favorite anime of all time when I've only seen a few hundred anime and there are people that have seen a few thousand anime. That's the same scale of someone who says My Hero Academia is their favorite out of the 10 shows they saw and someone who's seen a hundred shows is like, whoa, you haven't seen Code Geass and Death Note. How can you even say that? Saying something's their favorite is totally fine. Don't be an arse face and blast them because of the other toxic facets of My Hero Academia. That's right. Everyone gets equal shyst on this channel. I call it all out and then I laugh at it because it's funny to watch people fight over this. My Hero Academia is my favorite, but you've only seen three anime. Yes, and My Hero Academia is my favorite. Yeah, but but you're not allowed to have a favorite because you've only seen three. Well, it's my favorite out of these three. Well, you're, you're not allowed to have preferences if you've only seen three anime. You can only start having preferences once you've seen at least 400. <laughs> the internet is so fun. But now, while I'm having a lovely time insulting the fandom and the anti-fandom when it comes to saying, oh, My Hero Academia is the greatest anime ever created, even though they've only seen like four anime. Deku himself has his own mini plague that spreads, and honestly, I find this even more annoying. I don't care if you think Deku's the greatest anime character of all time. Honestly, all the power to you. You could like who you like, but the fandom has to play it up to extremes that, well, are just blatantly wrong. Oh, wow. Look at My Hero Academia. Truly amazing to have a character like Deku actually cry. That's right. They're not afraid to have a male anime character cry cry. Such a progressive anime that My Hero Academia is. Deku truly is a worthy protagonist. No, I'm, I don't want to be that guy or anything, but I appreciate that you're praising My Hero Academia for this very novel creation of Deku, a protagonist that cries. But, uh, Naruto cried, Ichigo cried, Luffy cried, Natsu cried. Fam, this isn't like the single most original thing on the face of the planet. You don't have to make up excuses to like Deku. If you like Deku, all the power to you. You have bad taste. I don't care. But the double standard given to everything when it comes to the My Hero Academia fandom is next level if infuriating. And then when you see people getting infuriated, you could then laugh at the people that are infuriated over the stupidity because, hey, that's when the internet cesspool of chaos begins and it's beautiful. Because
because speaking of a double standard, as we know, Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia, he has a very <laughs> nuanced sense of humor. Now, you probably didn't get this at first glance, I know, but he likes making the girls, well, slightly more sexualized than the boys. Momo could pull random shiz out of her body, so of course her quirk is used best when she's wearing as little clothing as possible. Oh, that's nice. Invisitoots needs to constantly be taking her clothes off in middle of battle so all the boys around there can have very fun thoughts. Froppy can swallow things and then regurgitate them back up by, you know, simply orgasming them back to the surface of her throat. Because yes, that is what happens, sort of. And then there's Slimy Acid Girl, who's always, well, moist. Now, I'm not trying to say anything negative against Horikoshi here or anything. It's his manga and he can do whatever the hell he wants. But I don't need the Justice Army of Zawardo to gather beneath his feet and start just harassing the guy over any decision he makes. Fam, he could literally make a chapter, nuclear holocaust begins, blows up every single sentient life form on the face of the planet. The only survivor is Deku's pet cockroach, Beku, and the story begins to follow him. If he were to do that, well, I wouldn't like my hero academia as much as I did until this point, but I wouldn't harass the guy. That is never okay. It's his story. But even as far as the harassment goes, oh, look, all the female characters are so sexualized. Wow, on this cover photo, Oh, Momo shows her tummy like she does in literally the entire anime. Wow, Horikoshi, that's pretty sexist of you. And not only is it sexist of you, but also you're a pedophile because even though Momo looks like an adult and when she dresses in as an adult, everyone thinks she's an adult, but she's actually only 15. Hell yeah. I understand she's a cartoon character that's literally created to be attractive. I mean, that is what they were thinking when, you know, they gave her breasts and they made her hero outfit basically non-existent but no you must be a pedophile if you harbor any lewd thought towards momo yaoyorozu while in fact those same people that are blasting people for liking momo well those people have massive crushes on izuku and on bakugo and on todoroki yes they're 15 but in that situation it's totally justified because they're just so hot it's so comical in the contradiction of it all i honestly can't even get myself upset about it it's so funny Funny that one person can share these two stances of wow there's so much lewd art of momo everyone's a secret sexist pedophile and at the same time damn look at lewd todoroki's abs oh man and speaking of harassing the writer for decisions they made in their own manga dude endeavor is probably my second favorite character in my hero academia he is very nuanced and well written it is brilliant that you have a society about heroes and this guy is completely self centered in it to win it he's in it for the fame he's in it for the glory and because of that he's saving countless lives the philosophy behind something like that and the interesting themes present in the show of my hero academia only blossom because of someone like him in the end of the day he saves thousands of lives but he's doing it for very dickish reasons so is he a good guy or is he a bad guy well that's why it's so interesting to compare him to someone like stain stain is obviously a villain he is doing bad things but he convinces himself that he is doing it for the the moral reasons. So, you got Stain, a moral villain, and you have Endeavor, a very not moral hero. Hmm, interesting dichotomy there, isn't it? Let's explore that. That's what I would say if I was a fan, which I am, and which is why I said that, and which is why Endeavor's goddamn character arc is amazing, but then Horikoshi's like, all right, let's try to redeem his character a little bit. Let's show how once you put him in the spotlight where he has to be the symbol of peace, he has to start picking up the mantle. This guy is gonna have a redemption arc. Fair Random goes crazy. Oh my god, this guy did bad things in the past. How could he redeem himself? I mean, he abused his son and his wife. He should not have a redemption arc. But these same people are totally fine when villains become good guys in every other anime. Have you seen Naruto? Did you know that Garo was a bad guy? That, well, he didn't have kids or a wife at the time, but like, he murdered many innocent people and had a redemption arc, and it was great. Pain killed many innocent people and had a redemption arc, and it was great. Obito. He, he declared world war. So many thousands of people died because of this bastard and he had a redemption arc and it was great. Redemption arcs are very often amazing. But oh, Endeavor? Well, it's true he didn't actually kill anybody, but he abused his kid, which uh, I'm not trying to condone here. Not saying that it's something I'm necessarily promoting on the channel. But fam, if he writes a redemption arc about a character, that, that's just part of the story. Don't harass the dude over it. Man, this fandom is next level. They see things through their own twisted gaze upon 
upon this perfect, ideal gem of a story that anything that just barely veers from the overarching mindset of this nameless fandom, well, that's just straight up blasphemy. And as far as turning their delusions into reality, that is one of the biggest issues with the My Hero Academia fandom. Because, well, I mean, I don't really care if you ship Aizawa and All Might and Principal Mole Rat Guy as the most badass threesome of all time. Go for it, but leave it in the confines of your own really wacky mind. Don't make it canon. I personally do not give a damn about ships. I kind of let the story, you know, sail by itself. And, you know, I want to see how the story unfolds, not how my weird delusion of the story manages to inevitably disappoint me when it doesn't turn out exactly the way I envisioned. But the fandom, the, the fandom's just next level. At one point, people were shipping Bakugo and Uraraka really hard. Oh my God, dream couple right here. Yes, they have absolutely zero chemistry in the actual series. Yes, they uh, pretty much hate each other and tried to beat the crap out of each other in tournament and did not hold back at all because of secret blooming feelings for one another. No, in fact, uh, none of that was ever mentioned or alluded to in the entirety of the show. It is obviously not canon. It is obviously never going to be canon, but people wanted it to happen because they liked both characters. They liked Uraraka because she was developed to look exactly like a minion from Despicable Me, and Bakugo because, well, let's be honest, he's way better than Deku, even though he dies in the manga. It was so sad when he died in the manga. I'll get back to that in a minute. But I saw this as the most brilliant opportunity. So many people are annoyed by shipping Bakugo with Uraraka, so that's exactly why you gotta ship Bakugo with Uraraka. That's right, fight fire with fire, fanbase. We must join forces and flood out the unironic cringers with ironic cringe. That's right, the ultimate and only solution to this terrible, terrible problem. Just kill Bakugo. I mean, it was so sad when he died in the manga. I still cry to this day. But the fandom is so easy to mess with, it's hilarious. I came up with this Bakugo dies meme a while ago, and damn it, I memed that video to have over a million views on YouTube right now. I still get hate comments to this day, and whenever someone mentions something about Bakugo dying literally anywhere on Twitter, some absolute badass member of the fan base is gonna tag me and be like, Hey, Lord Nexanor, look what's happening over here. Which is very cool. And then uh, the chaos only spread. Now, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here for a minute as well, because as bad as many facets of the My Hero Academia fandom are, and as funny as they've become, because they're just comprised of like supreme congregation of dumbasses, it's like in the past, I was wondering how could you gather a large amount of dumbasses in one place at the same time? It was a thought experiment that I've done for, for generations. And uh, well, we've come to the conclusion. All you have to do is kill Bakugo and blammo, surrounded by dumbasses. But as cringe as a lot of it is, like any toxic fandom, the backlash is very often worse than the actual core disease. Now, when I say backlash, I mean people roasting the fandom without even really watching My Hero Academia, just because it's fun to roast naive people who think Demon Slayer is the best anime of 2019. I mean, My Hero Academia is the best anime of all time. Now, this video was not meant to say that My Hero Academia has the most toxic anime fandom of all time. No, because obviously that's Dragon Ball. No, the purpose of this video is how to deal with it. And it's not by just adding more fuel to the fire, it's by laughing at the fire. And also laughing at the people that throw more fuel at the fire. Because that entire back and forth is honestly hilarious. Deku breaks his arm when he punches Todoroki and like, the whole fandom's like, oh my god, Deku's crying again. What a wimpy loser. Ah, Deku sucks. What a stupid protagonist. And then like two minutes later, you have Bakugo saying, shut up, Deku, kill yourself. And then the whole fandom comes together like, ah, poor baby Deku. I love him. What a precious dude. We have to protect him forever. And the two-sidedness of the fandom is hilarious. And toxicity is hilarious. So that is basically my thesis for this video. The toxic fandom consists of people that are relatively new to the anime fandom and still want to sound like they have have an objective opinion and say, oh, My Hero Academia is the greatest anime of all time. It's prolonged by the people that actually hate on the people that are obviously not major anime fans that have only seen like three shows and say, well, how can you say My Hero Academia is the greatest anime of all time when clearly you haven't seen all of One Piece watching each episode separately with Tekking's chapter review of what happened at the same time. And if it's not that lovely dynamic of normie versus elitist, well then, the other major facet of the toxic fandom of My Hero Academia are people that are complaining about nothing for attention and the people that are complaining about the people that are complaining about nothing also for attention. Women and gender women, that makes me the greatest My Hero Academia attention whore of all time. I am just as 
toxic as the rest of the phantom. But the only difference is it only makes me stronger. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Hope you learned something very new, interesting, and educational today. Smash like if you enjoyed this video. Let me know other interesting fandoms you would like me to cover. And well, dissect with slight malice and sadist vibes. Subscribe to see future slightly sarcastic meme and brilliant content because, well, you're only gonna get the finest educational Gentheoi PhD level stuff on this channel. And next time someone tells you that they ship Bakugo with Uraraka, just look sad. And when they ask why, they'll say, why would you ship Uraraka with a character that's already dead? F in the chat for Bakugo. His legacy will carry on. <laughs> Man, I love making fun of idiots on the internet. Have yourselves the most wonderful evening and remember to stay weird, fam. <laughs>